13. You can blame another health related problem on the pandemic, at least partially. New state by state obesity rankings show over the last year, 16 states had adult obesity rates at or above 35%, and that's actually up from 12 the previous year. Trust for America's Health released these latest numbers, and joining us to discuss is Dara Lieberman with Trust for America. Good morning to you. Great to have you on this morning. Let's talk about where you saw these high numbers and how did Illinois rank? Well, Illinois' adult obesity rate is about 32% right now, which puts them in the middle of the pack compared to uh, other states. But Illinois is also, like many other states, seen in increases over the past decade by about 5%. So what's going on right now and how has the pandemic affected this? Well, obesity and the pandemic are really interrelated. So we know that obesity is a risk factor for severe COVID disease. So people are more likely to be hospitalized or, um, or unfortunately to die from COVID if they have obesity or related crises. We also know the pandemic has made it harder for people to be healthier, to access healthy foods, to access physical activity, to go to school where they're getting school meals and, and having recess and physical education. So they're really interconnected. So was there a certain age group that you found to be hardest hit? Well, I think we we see that all age groups have been hit. We don't have the childhood data right now that is a result of the pandemic, but surveys during the pandemic showed that a lot of Americans had unwanted weight gain, had uh, more trouble exercising, had much more stress, obviously, and economic stress, which contributes to weight gain and, and unhealthy lifestyle as well. You know, obesity has been a, a problem forever, and then we're hearing the pandemic is having an impact on this. But why should people be so concerned about these numbers? What is the long-term impact of this? Well, we, we know that uh, it's been a trend over the last couple of decades. We make it really easy and cheap to eat unhealthy foods um, and much more difficult to have healthy foods like fruits and vegetables. It's more expensive. There are many neighborhoods across Chicago that don't have supermarkets, that don't have a uh, place to buy produce, that don't have safe places for kids to play. 88% of children in Illinois don't live in a neighborhood that have parks or playgrounds or sidewalks, and that's far above the national average. 88%, that is a whopping massive number and also very disturbing to hear. So what needs to be done to reverse this trend and address the issue? We need to make the social policy and economic uh, changes to make healthy living, healthy food uh, accessible for everyone. So that means uh, healthy school meals should be free for all children. Uh, we've seen the great impact that has had uh, over the past year as children have had free school meals in a lot of places. We need to make uh, active transportation like sidewalks, um, bike trails, um, safe places for people to commute to work and school. That, that comes down from Congress, but local people can also contact their city government, their local government, and ask them to invest in safe infrastructure, mm -hmm. in safe playgrounds and parks for, for children. In the meantime, until that happens, and that because that could be a very long process, what do you want to say to parents of uh, these children who don't have access to the, the right foods, who don't have access right now to a play area. What do you want to say to them? What can they do now to make a difference in their child's life? Well, we, we know that um, people in lower income um, populations, it is very difficult to, to find those healthy meals, even when we give, um, when we give uh, assistance to buy food. It may, they may live in a neighborhood without a supermarket. So. Um, you do have the power to contact your, your lawmakers. We need to make those neighborhoods safer. Um, and please uh, talk to your children and, and their schools about making sure that they have healthy school meals. Make sure the school district knows, your school board knows that you want healthy school meals um, for all children. So I know it's uh, individuals can make uh, healthy decisions if they're empowered and if they have the resources to do so, but it really comes um, from the community policymaker level. We need all sectors involved. Okay, Dara Lieberman with Trust for America. Thanks for joining me this morning and sharing those important numbers. Appreciate your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. We'll be